This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, excuse the attire, it's casual Friday, I've decided. Um, okay, so we've got an update on the breaking news that we had last night about the fire on board a vessel, which I said was possibly or most likely a vessel called Araya SF. Um, well, we can confirm now that it was that vessel. So what we know today is there were seven crew on board. That's a full complement of crew, according to the, uh, the website of the builders, ISA Yachts, who built the vessel. And there were nine guests on board too. So, like I said in the video last night, if you haven't seen it, the, the vessel was, was in a, a, off a Spanish island, uh, it's just south of uh, Ibiza, called uh, Formentera. And... Um, the vessel uh, caught fire, the vessel was at anchor. You can actually see in the, some of the footage that, that the anchor's down. Found a new uh, video showing uh, the crew evacuating the vessel, as you can probably see on screen now as I'm talking. Now you can see that, you can see that the, the crew, you can hear the fire alarm, first of all. So the fire alarm's activated, of course. Oh, we're getting the right here. Let's see, Eric. Now, you can see the crew disembarking off the uh, swim platform into a boat. Now, some reports said that boat is, was from the vessel. Um, I think it's unlikely because it's quite large. And other reports said it was a police vessel. Now, we, from that video alone, we can't tell which one it was. But anyway, the, the crew were evacuated into that, into that smaller boat. You can also see a white tender there as well which that's more likely that the the tender from that from that boat but i we can't be sure on, on, on any of that uh there were no reports of any uh, casualties which is great news um the the yacht is owned by uh italian tycoon paolo scudieri now it's not known if he was on board but it's very likely he was on board because it's his boat the boat was in was, had guests on, there were nine guests on board. So it's, it's very likely he was on board. What's remarkable about this, the thing is when you work at sea, you spend a large proportion of your time training for fires, especially on the larger vessels. And you can see why, you can see how quickly this fire spreads in this video. And you can see that when the, when the crew are disembarking, that the, there's a lot of smoke, but almost Immediately after the last one steps off the boat, you see the fire break through and uh, it completely engulfs the vessel. And then you can see in the video that the people who were filming, they once they saw how big the fire came so quickly, they decided that they needed to, to move away in case of any explosions, which was very smart. Now, I have a, an eyewitness report here that I'm going to read. Uh, I tried to get in touch with the, with the person to talk to them a little bit more, but they haven't been in touch with me so far. They said, we were anchored on, a, on our 17 meter sailing vessel right next to the vessel. We saw how an initial small fire appeared extinguished. We noticed that the fire water pumps stopped running and the captain was requesting urgent support for water by VHF. Uh, smoke reappeared and after a couple of minutes we saw flames in the main salon and soon after the fire was out of control. Last crew members abandoned the ship with a tender Flames engulfed the ship and all areas were on fire. And the, the vessel's been completely destroyed. Um, there was some hope that um, it might withstand, but no, it's completely destroyed, complete, a total loss. Um, now, what some of the things that were said in that, in that eyewitness report there, we talked about the fire pumps. Now, the fire pumps will be activated by the crew when there's a fire and they, that will run so you can use your hoses, yeah? So, and that is uh, the fire pump, the regulations, the multi-regulations of how the fire pump should run. It's for a vessel of this size. It's, first of all, it's, it's quite tricky to work out what vessel has which equipment because it, the, the, the regulations change based on a lot of different things. So the vessel is um, over 24 meters, but under 500 gross tons for unlimited uh, vessel in terms of seagoing so some vessels are limited to where they can go so that and the restrictions fire restrictions change based on those things diff being different and as i don't have a full list of the of of what regulations that vessel was built to i can't give you i can only give you my best guess 
but according to the, the Malta regulations for a 25 meter, uh, 24 meters or over and under 500 gross tons, this is what it should have had on board. This is not inclusive, this is just the main things. So it should have had an automatic sprinkler slash mist system in accordance with the requirements of the IMO fire safety code as amended shall be fitted on all yachts which do not comply with the restricted use of combustible materials. So what that means is there should be a system, a sprinkler system or mist, mist system, which is usually by a company called High Fog. They, they are the most common systems that I, I've never seen a system on board a yacht that wasn't High Fog. And they are like an advanced sprinkler, but they, they have a high mist, high pressure water. They create a big mist that takes the oxygen out of the air as well. Very effective, uses less water than a traditional sprinkler system. A traditional sprinkler system puts out so much water, it can actually affect the stability of the vessel. Uh, this, so this again, this vessel only is required to have that if it does not comply with the restricted use of combustible materials, which means that the way the, the the materials that the bulkheads which is the walls or the deck heads the ceilings are constructed from depending on what materials are used they may or may not require a sprinkler system i would imagine this boat had a sprinkler system but i cannot be sure about that now another thing that they would be required to have is which is what the eyewitness report said is that they could they hit the fire pump stop now on this vessel, it's only required by regulations to have one fire pump. Now, no, most vessels, larger vessels will have multiple fire pumps and each one will be controlled, will, will be powered by a different area like the emergency switchboard or the, you know, something outside of the engine room. And the reason for that is the engine room is the most likely source of any fire. Uh, and they're only required to have one fireman's outfit with BA, which is breathing apparatus. So on a larger yachts, like the, the vessels I've worked on, we'd have two teams of firefighters and there'd usually be three or four people in each team. You could have three teams depending on the size. The bigger the vessel, the more te fire teams you had because you have a bigger crew. I just mentioned it briefly there that um, most fires are started in engine room. And this is according to the UK P&I Club, which is a marine mutual liability insurer in the United Kingdom. And they said that most fires start in the engine room. Other areas uh, of, of high probability of fires are, you know, machinery rooms and also uh, laundries and um, galleys. Galleys very often, very often get small fires in galleys. So I just wanted to address some of uh, some of the comments. Uh, so firstly, as far as we know, none of the vessels that have, have been on fire in recent videos, in any of the videos we've done this year, have been belonging to sanctioned owners. So that, forget that one. So that is not the case. Another thing is a lot of comments about poor training or, or not having the correct equipment. And, and the, the reality is having the correct equipment does not guarantee um, that you're going to put out the fire sometimes fires just cannot be contained um and another a very common thing is asking me particularly is are there more fires than normal uh lately and <clears throat> obviously the data on this year's uh, the amount of fires this year obviously won't be out yet because we're still in this year but um up until the data going back previous years there is no statistics that show there has been an increase in fires it's just most most likely an increase in the reporting of fires, um, and um, and then the, the next one is which we get every time I, every time we mention a fire on the channel. It, the most the things that people jump to straight away is insurance fraud, and you know clearly some vessels may be uh, victims of insurance fraud, um, but it's I would say it's probably a very low percentage. Now this vessel in particular is a brand new vessel. It was just delivered last month to 20, 25 million euro vessel. Um, the owner is very wealthy and, um, and it also was full of people. There's seven crew on board, nine guests. Um, so it's very unlikely you're gonna invite all your family or friends on and then set fire to the vessel, right? Also, a vessel that has a crew of seven on it like that, you, to, to, to try to do something like that, you'd have to have all of those crew members in on that uh, on that scheme and you know first of all nobody wants to die at sea 
Secondly, nobody wants to lose a license because that's our career, right? We've all trained for many years to qualify to work on these vessels and we're not going to give it up for um, a, you know, a payoff for setting fire to a vessel. It just goes against everything that people know in the industry about, you know, we, we train so much about fires, there's no way that someone's going to deliberately set a fire. Very, very unlikely that many yachts are ever the victims of that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, I'm sure it does, but in this particular instance, it's, the likelihood is almost zero. Also, because these vessels take, this one took three years to build. Now, when that vessel is built, there's a limited number of yachts and they can be more valuable than what they paid for them because if they sell it to someone else, they don't have to wait three years. So there is very good market for used or pre-delivered vessels. Uh, so there's no reason to, have to want to go through that, go through all the stress of it and then potentially get caught and potentially not get any money. It, it's just, yeah, it's, it's very unlikely. Hopefully I've addressed the most frequently mentioned things in the comments sections there. So I've just got a couple, I've just got one other thing to talk about and it's very quick. Uh, Moti Yacht A out in Dubai, being spotted again yesterday. Um, I mentioned recently that we were tracking the tenders and in the last two weeks the, the tenders have stopped transmitting AIS too. I was saying that it was possibility they hadn't launched any tenders. But you can see in this video here, the tender garage door is open. It's back at the world area in Dubai, and much closer to, to, the, to the shore this time. And the tender garage is open there. So they're clearly launching tenders. So they have most likely switched off the AIS. Now, the vessel still is not showing as, be, as having a flag state on any of the systems that, where you can check any of the registries. All right, guys, I'm got, oh, there's one other thing. Amadea, I've got a few people contacting me saying about Motiart Amadea out in San Diego. It was on the move. It just went out to an anchorage for a few hours and it is now back in its berth where it was before. So, yeah, nothing to see there. Oh, well, there is another thing, actually. Um, in Motiart Eclipse also has, has moved recently. Went from uh, Gojek in Turkey, ran to Marmaris. I was, what's it, a little bit interesting about this is um, the vessel was sat there for an awful long time, over a month, maybe two months, and then Garçon turned up. Uh, people saw the, the boats from Garçon transferring stuff over to Eclipse, and then Eclipse left shortly after. So the possibility that they were waiting on some supplies from the, from the supply vessel, from the, the shadow vessel. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll catch up with you soon. Uh, be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell for future notifications. Oh, my game was right here. Ah, it's good weg there, I can't even hear. They have to go. Oh my God.